morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in beautiful Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. And uh, last night, now this, this is my birthday weekend. Uh, tomorrow's my birthday, but last night I had a uh, birthday dinner and I'm 83 years old this weekend. And I'm, uh, I was really surprised last night because uh, I got uh, two bottles of uh, single, malt sco single malt scotch. Uh, one is... Uh, Le Frog, well, you can't read it because it's backwards, and the other one is uh, Oban. I guess that's how you pronounce it. This is 10-year-old scotch. This is 14-year-old scotch. And uh, so I've been, uh, and also got a bottle of uh, gin and vermouth. So <laughs> I may have to start having a martini time talk again at 5 o'clock. Uh, since I'm doing Zen Fits around 9 in the morning, I want the help, you know. And... Um, so I've been writing this morning about the uh, uh, pleasure of uh, a single malt scotch, which is becoming very popular now, apparently. Uh, even at our local ABC store here in uh, Blackstone, Virginia, in the uh, Bible, rural Bible Belt of the South, uh, they've got more expensive single malt scotches there. Uh, up, one of them goes up to $100. And um, this is expensive shit. And... Uh, because it's aged. Uh, this, this Oban, I looked it up, it's 14-year-old. Uh, and, and the uh, uh, age, so they, the, that's what the single malt, it, it's aged. And so the older it is, the better flavor it has, the better taste, flavor, the richness of it, you see. So look at me. <laughs> so I've been writing about this uh, uh, analogy between uh, me and... Uh, uh, old single malt scotch and um, I'm just coming out of the keg folks uh, I'm just you know the scotch uh, these these uh, so they, you so suppose you want to produce this stuff well you got to uh, make it and you got to put it in these uh, oak kegs and you got to wait 14 years you got to wait 14 years before you can sell it who can do that so uh, that reminds me, uh, you know, I know with you too, that, that your life is filled with little nuggets of memories and um, they connect the dots and tell your story. And so I'd suddenly remember back, I guess, when I was 20 years old and we were going through this craft show in... Um, New Jersey, I forgot uh, where it was on the Delaware River, and uh, I came upon these beautiful walnut coffee tables. I mean, the slab, it was like steaks, a whole big slab of walnut polished, you know, so you could, you know, just gorgeous. And I said, oh, oh, how do you, how do you do that? I told the craftsman there, you know, how do you get started with that? You know, what a stupid question. And he, and he looks at me with these calm, kind eyes. And he says, first you find a walnut tree. Oh, in the silence. And then you wait till it matures. <laughs> so that's kind of like my story. You know, I've been, I've been waiting my whole life in an oak keg. Uh, Mature, waiting, waiting to be matured, and, and of course my mature, my when you mature, when the scotch matures, you pour it out and you serve it. Oh, and you sip it. You don't go toss it down like a tequila shot. You sip it. You enjoy it. You share it. So I'm asking you, my friends, you know to. To uh, now that I have matured uh, uh, for 83 years, I'm coming out of the keg. So you should sip my writing. You should sip my Zen fits. Don't chug them down and discard them or pour them down the sink or toss them off and say, Bleh. sip it. Should be enjoyed because there's a taste of old oak of an old walnut tree, an old walnut tree that has matured, that has developed the taste of some kind of context, 
some kind of, because of its height, the walnut tree, because of its meditation in the oak barrel, this contemplation in the cave, and it comes out, it's got a flavor to give. It's got an insight to give. It's got a different way of looking at things. It's got a way of looking that has a wide angle lens instead of the narrow focus lens of youth. You see, because the young mind is focused on what's in, you know, teenagers, every event is, oh my God, is this forever? Oh my God, this is the way I'm going to be my whole life, you know, just from an emotional trauma. And blah, that's why suicide comes. Oh, this is the way I am for the whole life. I might as well shoot myself. <laughs> you see. So, what you're dealing, what you're having with me now, um, as I am coming out of the keg, so to speak, in little uh, little glasses of sipping scotch, um, just enjoy it and let it seep in, uh, and and. Um, if there's something there for you, fine. If you don't, if not, fine, you know. But I'm going to be uh, uh, bringing you uh, my Zen fits now. I really feel like uh, some, the cork has been popped, you see, and uh, certain liberation in that, certain liberation in being out of the cave and being out of the keg, uh, being out of the forest, so to speak. So. We shall continue, and uh, I think, and since I got another bottle of gin, I may even start having a martini time talk at five o'clock. I did a couple of hundred of those, and uh, by the way, yesterday was my hundred and first Zen fit. So I've been pouring these uh, single malt drinks of Zen uh, for 101 days. You see, now this is 102, and they seem to be. Uh, Flowing pretty regularly now. I, I can I can depend upon them to be there, and uh, I have my uh, little watch. Go to go see it, and uh, I've I've started wearing my. I took my father's watch. I was just using it on the. I would just use it for my talk, and I put it back on the shelf. But then I realized, you know, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So if I don't use my father's watch every day and keep it wound up. Um, it'll probably freeze up, you see. So um, I got a little chain, and I keep it on my watch, my wa my uh, watch pocket, and um, check it during the day, so I can stay in tune with my father, so I can stay in sync with my father. Uh, now, of course, the father is a metaphor, you see. You see, uh, when Jesus says, uh, "My father and I, I am the father. The father and I are one." That's a metaphor. He's not talking about uh, uh, Joseph, <laughs> my old grand, my old, my old daddy here. The, and I are one. You say no, it's a metaphor. I and my father. Now the father is fill in the blank. But it's something big. I and the world are one. I am. I and my fill in the blank are one. That is the old scotch. That is the wisdom of the single malt scotch, you see. I and my blank are one. Whenever you are one with something, you eliminate conflict. You eliminate the war, the civil war. You eliminate the struggle, the effort, the trying, the search, the quest. It's all gone when you are one with what you were trying to be, when you are one with what you weren't trying to be, <laughs> when you are one with anything, the conflict is over, you see. And that's when the scotch is ready. That's when you have matured. And that's when you're ready to give and serve something of value to other people. Uh, and so um, I and my father are one. and. Uh, I'm here uh, to pour out uh, some good scotch. And um, thanks for dropping in, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning.